fill a large brush with blue paint and just randomly brush it over the sky area without trying to fill it completely. Now crumple up a piece of tissue or kitchen roll and begin dabbing over sections of the sky to bring out the hazy clouds. And don't worry about the small unpainted areas. This is a dark mix of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson or cadmium red. And this closer hill is slightly darker on the shadow side of the hill. Lift out the highlights with a tissue. And don't paint the rocks yet that are on the summit. The color for these trees is a mix of viridian and burnt sienna. The tree clump on the left is closer so indicate some loose leaves against the skyline. And the touch of sienna blots the rocks on the summit. Start the roof with a light wash of burnt sienna. Now that this area has dried, we can now begin to indicate the tree mass a bit better. With a darker mix and using the side of a small brush, just dab in the impression of the trees and then carefully leave out the top of the clothesline and the clothes. For the main tree, touch up some blue into a strong mix of burnt sienna to make up a dark brown. Plot in the two large branches and work in all the secondary branches. All the finer twigs are added in with the number two rigger brush and always paint the twigs away towards the end, which will always be much thinner than the starting points. Paint them not in a straight line, but with multiple angles, as this makes them look much, much more realistic. These leaf clumps are dabbed in with a sponge. Leave some sky holes as well as the dry branch. Note that this branch is subtly pointing the viewer's eye towards the cottage. Finish the rocks and add some distant tree clumps on the hill as well as all the different tonal ranges for interest. First add some very subtle shading under each of the cloud masses. Don't overdo this though. This is very light sienna and adds a little bit of warmth to the clouds. The roof begins with a darker mix of sienna as this indicates the rust on the roof sheets. Gradually build up the rust color as you paint along. Now the underpainting for the wall is a light blue-gray mix. This wall is not completely in the sun. The other wall in the shade is just a darker blue-gray. Plot the shadows and we will come back to them later. Now in the foreground, add the distant green and the small shrubs on the left. We can now lay a nice wet wash of light green over all the foreground and while it is still wet, drop in some of the darker green mix and see how soft the edges have become as they merge. Slowly and carefully build up the darker patches. The left side will be darker because of the trees at causing shadow on the left. The light is coming in from the left. This foreground has long grass, so we will not see too many stalks. Just the soft mass of the grass tops. Now while this mass dries, we can go over to the cottage and begin some of the detailing with a couple of small round brushes show the sheet separations and some indications of the corrugations and also where they lift up of one another. While painting the dark shadow under the eaves, carry on and glaze some light color over the wall for further in interest and contrast. And this shows up the lighter wall. Paint the clothes on the washing line in a variety of colors to brighten up the painting. Use a sharp craft knife to lightly scratch in the washing line itself. Now that the dark wall is dry, add a warm glaze over it. With the same warm color, mark some in onto the lighter wall and chimney. And as you do this, 
work up more subtle details in darker areas to show up the roughness of the wall and the chimney and the doorway and complete the window and the oven opening. With a small brush, more details are painted onto the wall. Now these two bushes at each end of the cottage help to bring out the contrast against the wall. Now we look at the foreground grass and the impression of the grass is painted in with an old hog airbrush with splayed hairs which is ideal for imitating long grass. Just add some in at the dark patches because the strong light has burnt out the details in the bright light. The grass will be much more detailed closer to the viewer. We come now to the bare fruit trees and we paint them in with a number two rigger or fine liner and paint in them as shown. And as mentioned previously, always work outwards thinner and thinner. Also notice how the branches are not straight but have differing angles. The main tree is painted larger and over the cottage to add distance to the painting. Please like this video if you have enjoyed watching it and leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe so we can inform you when we bring out more new tutorials like this one. And if you would like to see the paint along version of this class, head over to our website onlineartlessons.com. Thank you.